Hello, and welcome to the Killer Cuties podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Cassidy, and I've seen almost every horror movie out there. And I'm KD, and I've seen almost none of them. So join us each week as I attempt to make a horror fan out of KD. As a warning, we will be discussing spoilers and some uncomfortable topics that may be in the plots. So feel free to check out the film on DoesTheDogDie.com first to check for any triggers before listening. Today, we're going to be talking about the 2005 creature feature, The Descent. Let's get spooky. All right, so I am going to kick us off with a summary of The Descent. Uh, So we start out when Sarah, her husband, Paul, and their daughter Jessica get into a car accident, which kills Paul and Jessica, leaving Sarah as the only survivor, which as soon as I started watching the movie, I realized was the exact same entrance as Megan. But moving on. (laughs) So one year later, Sarah joins her friends Beth, Juno, Sam, Rebecca, and Holly in the Appalachian Mountains for a spelunking trip. Uh, They descend into the cave, and after moving through a passageway, it collapses behind them, trapping them. Uh, Once this happens, Juno's kind of forced to admit that she has taken them to a cave system that has not been mapped yet. Uh, So they have no way of knowing if there is an alternate exit. They keep moving forward, hoping to find another way out. Um, Eventually, the group is attacked by a humanoid creature known as a crawler. Holly is killed, and the group kind of gets split up. Juno is startled by Beth and accidentally stabs her through the throat, thinking that she's a crawler. uh, And she just kind of leaves her as she's dying. Uh, Sarah later finds Beth as she's still dying and Beth confesses that Juno was the one who attacked her and that she was having an affair with Sarah's husband, Paul, when he was still alive. Juno, not Beth. Um, Beth dies, uh, when Sarah Mercy kills her. And then elsewhere, Sam and Rebecca are killed by crawlers while Juno kind of narrowly escapes, Uh, and she finds markings on the wall that lead to an apparent exit, so she starts going that way. Sarah and Juna then meet up near that other exit, uh, and a group of crawlers closes in on them. Sarah reveals that she knows about Juna's affair and her killing Beth, and as the creatures get closer and closer, Sarah stabs Juno in the leg, leaving her to die uh, to the crawlers so that she can escape. Once out, Sarah gets in her car and speeds away, but eventually pulls over on the side of the road, breaking down in tears. She vomits. She sees the hallucination of Juno and screams. And that's where it ends. Unless, of course, (laughs) you watch the UK version, in which case, right after she screams, Sarah awakens back in the cave, having hallucinated her escape, and you hear the crawlers closing in on her. (laughs) And that's the film. Wild. Yeah. It was a wild ride. I'm glad you said something about the extended ending because I knew that was coming. Like I I knew where the break between like, oh, that could like she could just be dead and everything from here on out is a vision. Yeah. Or like a hallucination. You can tell exactly when that is. Like she falls as she's running away. Yep. Smacks her head and she's like just laying there and then open her eyes yeah i i've seen both endings um and really i mean they're the same movie it's just the uk kind of goes on a little bit longer and is a little bit more bleak which is why they actually did the american ending because americans thought it was not a happy enough ending for them (laughs) um but the sequel actually picks up where the american version leaves off so I think it's safe to say that that ending is canon now. So she escapes. Um, I think the director was was comparing it to one of the Saw movies where like, yeah, she escapes, but is that really the happy ending? Yeah, it's kind of like a... I don't think you can go through what she went through and it like be a fun, happy ride ending. <laughs> so Yeah. And also, I mean, you can watch the sequel. <laughs> gets even more unhappy so (laughs) and that was the other thing is that they tried to make it like as bleak as possible with every scene and then just make it more bleak 
Yeah. Yeah. They did a good job of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think because I, I have a quote written down from uh, the director, Neil Marshall. Where is it? Okay, yes. Okay, so he said about the movie, we really wanted to ramp up the tension slowly, unlike all the American horror films you see now. They take it up to 11 in the first few minutes and then simply can't keep it up. We wanted to show all these terrible things in the cave. Dark, drowning, claustrophobia. Then, when it couldn't get any worse, make it worse. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think... read that exact same quote. Yeah, I'm like, I think that's exactly what they did. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I agree. Every scene just like one up to the previous one with bleakness and darkness. Yeah. I don't I don't consider myself a claustrophobic person. But I don't even think that matters for this movie. <laughs> like there's a scene when Sarah's they're going through the passageway that collapses and she like starts to have a like a panic attack because it's so tight and best like talking her through it and I'm like but like talk me through it too cuz i'm kind of uncomfortable yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um it, and this is before we knew that the cave was collapsing yeah it was just awful it was just like that's just what spelunkers do sometimes no thank you couldn't be me Mm-mm. no big wide uh, open but I feel cave you. sure that oh yeah no yeah no, no. um I've told you, my husband and I, whenever we travel, we go to a cave and we go to a zoo. Yeah. Um, but never in a million years would I get that, like, intimate with a cave. <laughs> <laughs> there was apparently, like, one part of the set that was, like, a crevice that was, like, really, like, slippery and wet, and they nicknamed it the vagina. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Which just... They had, like... <laughs> 21 or 22 or something different cave sets yeah there are no actual shots of caves in this entire movie they built all the sets the entrance of the cave was cgi like they just thought it was going to be too time consuming and dangerous to film in an actual cave so yeah 21 different sets and they just reused them with different angles and different lighting for the scenes i think that's yeah i think it was very effective Mm-hmm. It looks like a fucking cave to me. Yeah. And he, I think for a lot of it, too, they only used lighting for, like, light sources that they would have. Nice. So, yeah. Kind of reminds me of um, the others. Yeah. They did a lot of natural. flashlight or natural light. or Yeah. Yeah. But I think, yeah, it, it was effective. And I, I hate it when movies are, like, so dark you can't see what's happening. And I don't feel like this movie did that. So it was, like, even when they were using, you know, their flares and their, you know, camcorders and whatever, it's, like, I felt like there was a decent enough lighting when there needed to be for me to, like, understand what was happening. <laughs> yeah. And it, honestly, it was really creative how they did they had all sorts of different light sources. To your point, they had the flare, so it was kind of this red light. They had the night vision camera, so it was kind of like found footagey. Mm-hmm. But that was super creative. Um, they would use the flashlights to like pan through the back of the cave. Did you notice the one time Sarah pans and there's a little guy in there, and then he's gone the second she pans back? Yeah, Oof. I f- I think there okay. were like multiple shots like that though, where like if you rewatch Oof. it and pay attention, you can kind of like see hints of them, like their shadows and stuff. Um, yeah, which like I'm pretty sure none of the actresses were actually knowing that that was happening. Like he'd just be like, "Oh, I want to get a shot of you guys like walking away," but really he just wanted to get a shot of the crawler. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. Yeah, but he didn't um... want like any like. He wanted actors to play the crawlers, not like stuntmen or anything like that. Like he wanted actual actors oh. because he wanted each of them to have like a unique backstory and personality and like bring life to it because, you know, they are essentially supposed to be people who just adapted to being cave dwellers. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was interesting, but I think they did like do the classic horror move of like separating everybody so that there was that sense of unfamiliarity and not knowing who's in the scene with you when you're doing it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it's funny that they're like humans that have like adapted to cave life because if you look at animals that live in caves, a lot of their like, what is it like de-evolution or whatever the word is, is like going blind. They go, they don't have any reason to see. Yeah. So they just don't. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like that was like, it made sense because like, okay, creature features don't typically scare me because they're not real. Like, at least in my eyes, I guess. If you want to believe in, like, werewolves and shit, that's fun. But, like, I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> but here it's it's conceivable to me, right? Like, I don't, I don't believe that there are cave-dwelling human crawlers that have, like, evolved like this. But it's at least realistic like it could who am yeah. i to say you know it's more realistic to me than like a werewolf or a vampire or other like creature feature types of of things yeah that's fair um have you seen nosferatu, nosferatu? <laughs> yes <laughs> that is i i had to look up because apparently the monsters are yes they were loosely based off yeah, okay. which I mean, like, if you you had to look him up, haven't you seen the the hash slinging slasher? Yeah, <laughs> he's in that. Of course, Nosferatu. <laughs> he's the one flicking the lights. <laughs> oh, I okay. You're right. I know. Um, I almost you know always am. Else? <laughs> oh my god. Um, do you know who else that reminds me of though? Is the original Phantom of the Opera, Lon Chaney Phantom oh, of the Opera? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's not wearing a mask. The original Phantom of the Opera doesn't wear a mask. I thought that was the whole point of the Phantom of the Opera. Well, the Andrew Lloyd Webber Phantom of the Opera, yes. Hmm. Have you not seen the Lon Chaney Phantom of the Opera? I'm going to be honest with you right now. I've never seen any Phantom of the Opera. Oh, my God. It just seems like Stockholm Syndrome the musical. Like, I don't I don't think I need to watch it that. It is. That's why it's great. <laughs> it doesn't seem <laughs> great to me. <laughs> Um, no, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, the movie came out when I was in like, I think seventh grade. Yeah. And, um, I got to go to the midnight premiere because I memorized the periodic table of elements. Numbers and all. Okay. Back when midnight premieres were a thing. Got it. And they weren't at like seven o'clock the day before. Wasn't Emmy Rossum like 16 during that? And Gerard Butler was like a full grown man. She was pretty young. Yuck. (laughs) I don't know that she, I don't, she was probably over 18. Oh, okay. It's a great movie. (laughs) The play is incredible. Mm, Nope. She was 17. Oof. Emmy Rossum was 17, Patrick Wilson, who plays Raul, was 30, and Gerard Butler, who played the Phantom, was 34. Uh, Uh, Barely 17, they say. Barely. Whoops. Yucky. Well, you did amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Anyway, uh, back to the movie. Yeah, um, Phantom of the Opera is kind of a wild leap from the descent, but you know what? We made it there. We, so. we went we went through the creatures. We just got yes. slowly further and further away from what the creatures look like until we, we got to Phantom of the Opera. We had the stepping stone of Nosferatu to really bring us home. Yes, exactly. Um, um, the the other thing that I thought was really cool about this movie is that it was originally supposed to be like a, a like mixed bag of cast, some men, some women. Um, they decided to go with all women. Yeah. Neil Marshall, the director, had just done Dog Soldiers, which is another horror movie, but it's about the military. And so, like, the cast was entirely men. And then mm. when he did this, he wanted to have an all-female cast because he kind of wanted to steer away from, like, the male-dominated horror. Um, and he also consulted Didn't with, he like, not even want to do a horror movie? No. At first, he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to be pigeonholed as, you know, a, a horror director. But then when he read yeah. the script, he really loved it. And he felt like it was so different from Dog Soldiers that he was like, all right. <laughs> all right. Let's do it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but yeah, he like he consulted with a lot of his female friends, too, because he wanted to make sure that he 
avoided cliches and really like defined the characters and had them be realistic women instead of just, you know, the virgin and the whore and the classic tropes that you always see in horror. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there were still some of those tropes. Yeah, but I feel like it was more well thought out than it was in like classic horror, you know? Like, okay. yes, you could say Juno is the whore because she yeah. slept with her friend's husband, which is like a weird behavior move, but like whatever. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I even still, like, when you watch the movie, like, I don't feel. I don't know. I didn't hate Juno. Like, you should. You should hate her. But, oh, like, I did. I kind of didn't. I still kind of thought she was a badass in the end. Did she get what she did? You know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be the one to tell Sarah if she did the wrong thing. <laughs> I probably would have done the same. <laughs> but it's still, like, I don't know. Like, when she kills Beth, like, I, I guess yeah like Beth was like please don't leave me I'm dying like and she just left but I also like I don't know how I would react if I accidentally just killed a friend like that's true what the fuck do you do in that situation also like fuck Beth why didn't she she knew I'm not saying it's, Be it's not Beth's fault it is Juno's fault but like no I get you if I knew that one of my friends was sleeping with my other friend's husband Ain't no way in hell I'm not being like, girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I think what made me mad about all of that and like really hate Juno was thinking back to when she says that Sarah wasn't the only one that lost something in that crash. Yeah. Like, fuck you. There were definitely like hints throughout that they were having an affair. Yeah, um, but that was gross. Yeah. You don't get to say that about somebody's husband and kid. Weren't you the one who said that the mist would have been so much sadder if they were having an affair and he had to kill her? <laughs> yes, but I'm not telling her to go around telling people to feel sorry for her because she was having an affair. That's a good point. That's solid. Yeah. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, no, that disgusting behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Do not condone. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. Um, yeah. I literally, before we started filming this, I was like, I didn't do a whole lot of research on this film, but now I'm remembering all the research I did do. Um, the other thing about having all of, all women cast, um, the like running title, not like the actual title for the movie, but the title before that they released it was Chicks with Picks. Yes, I did. I did read that, that as well. So cute. Chicks with Picks. <laughs> I was reading, like, reviews um, on Rotten Tomatoes of this before we started, and one person had just written, let's just be honest, this is a chick flick for people who like high body counts, and I was like, me? Well. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, and he's not wrong. No. He or they. They are not wrong. I couldn't tell based on the profile picture if I'm being honest, you know? <laughs> well, that's fine. I don't uh, think you can no, really tell from a profile picture, but, you know. Yeah. Shout out to that person wrong. who wrote that review. I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. Agree. I felt um, kind of bad rewatching this, though. Why? Because as soon as the scene where <laughs> Holly broke her leg happened, I was like, oh, Katie's going to hate this. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So here's the thing. Um, I take my own advice that I gave at the beginning of the podcast and I read as the dog die. Um, and this one had a very clear bone breakage. You see the bone breakage. Um, so I Wikipedia when that comes up. Yeah, that's probably um, good because it's a lot. It was. Yeah, it, I didn't yeah. see most of it, but what I did see was awful. And I'm so glad I didn't see most of it. Yeah, I had forgotten, like, how intense... Because it's actually been a while since I've watched this movie. And I kind of, like, forgot how intense that scene was. Like, it was a lot for me, so I can't imagine how bad it would have been for you if you'd watch it. She, like... Yeah. I don't know how much... Yeah, they have to, like, push the bone back into place. And boy, do they show every second of it. She like, Every second. She, like, grabs the bone. <laughs> Stop. That was the part where Stop. I was like, 
this is a little much. I'll be honest. I can admit when it's yeah. a little too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, like <laughs> even like now and watching what little I did of that scene, like I got a little shaky, like, oh, am I going to get through this? But I did. Yeah. It's fine. That's why dogs just a dog die exists. That's true. That is very true. Um, and that's really the only trigger that I look for. Like, that's no, that's not true. That's the only trigger that I will read ahead for, so I know when to not. Watch. Okay, that makes sense because yeah. that's like something that's kind of like, eh. if if you can't handle that, you really I don't think it's. Yeah. Especially yeah, yeah, this yeah. scene, like, because there's sometimes when like a bone breaks and it's kind of like you just hear it quickly but, and then it's you don't even like see anything. It's just like implied. Yeah. Yeah. Or somebody says, oh, I broke my leg. Yeah. That's fine. This one's not implied. You very clearly. No. <laughs> I was it. so glad she died. Honestly. <laughs> I I would not want to live after that happening to me. Okay. I didn't want to live after the reason that I don't like hearing bones break. And that was not that bad of a break. <laughs> so you, if your leg breaks, you're done. You're tapping out. You're I'm, good. Well, I mean, <laughs> if I'm stuck in a fucking cave okay, with yeah. monsters, yeah, I'm done. Kill me. Okay. It's not- I don't want to get out. Not the most ideal situation in which to break your leg. That's fair. No. Correct. Correct. Although, okay, one, just having to do with Holly, like maybe a plot hole, maybe not. But like at the beginning, Holly's the one that says- that like the cave so they were supposed to go to certain caves right and that's where juno told mm -hmm. them they were going and at the very beginning holly says that like the caves that they're going to are a total tourist trap but like wouldn't she know then when they got there that that was not the caves you'd think right like unless she just heard about it and didn't like had never been but yeah, that like struck me when I watched it this time. I was like, wait, didn't this bitch just say that it was a tourist trap? Like, wouldn't she pull up and be like, this is not the caves well, we're supposed to be? <laughs> yeah. And wasn't she like the guide? No. So Juno was she. So Holly is like an explorer. But I think she's okay. just friends with Juno. And Juno was okay. supposed to be like, she's the one that had the book and everything and had like been there and mm -hmm. was the one that was like taking them there. Got it. Got it. Yeah. But okay. still, that just struck me. I was like, hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Um, that is kind of plot holy. Yeah. But also prior to the on an unrelated note, but prior to the sequel coming out, there was like a really popular fan theory that all of the crawlers were hallucinations and Sarah actually just like lost it and killed all of her friends <laughs> and at that time again like before the sequel Neil Marshall even like acknowledged it and it was like "Ooh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's some uh that's some Stephen King action in the mist that is wish I wrote that yeah I'm kind of yeah I'm kind of glad that that's not how it happened though I kind of hate the whole like it was all a dream. It was all in their head type of ending. Oh, like, okay, it's yeah. just not my favorite, personally. I think it's kind of a cop-out. <laughs> so did you prefer the U.S. ending, then? I kind of liked both. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really mind either. Okay. But I kind of... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the UK one kind of like drags a little bit. It's like, oh, she hits her head and then she wakes up and then she escapes and then, oh, she wakes up again and it's all a hallucination. But I do kind of like bleaker endings, so I'm not like mad about it. Really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I didn't technically watch the American ending, but like you can tell when. Yeah. Like she screams and that's the end. And then everything past that is the UK ending. Um, yeah. No, I... I... I didn't mind the, to your point, I guess it is kind of a trope, like, it was all a dream, but I didn't mind it. Yeah. I think I don't mind it if it's like a, like a, like a short moment that's like, oh, 
that that was a dream, that was like a hallucination, whatever. But I think it, when it's like the entire movie is discounted as just like all of it was made up, I think that's when it really bothers me because I'm like, okay, what was the point then? Like all of this was for nothing because it didn't actually happen. Yeah, true. I don't know. Maybe that's a mean thing. <laughs> Was there anything you didn't um, like? Ooh. Um, I mean, it was kind of body horror heavy. Um, not a huge fan of that, but it was nowhere near as bad as Martyrs. So, <laughs> I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't so bad. <laughs> um, I mean, really, that's the only thing that stuck out to me. Um, some of the dialogue was like, uh, you know, yeah, whatever. Um, but no, I didn't. I enjoyed it. What about you? Thanks. Yeah, same. I I love this movie. Um, I think the only thing that like kind of bothers me every time I watch it is like the crawlers are kind of inconsistent with how they hunt because it's supposed to be like they're blind. They use echolocation. They just use sound, right? Yeah. But then there's always like the one scene where Sam dies, and she's like. So she's going across this chasm and she's hanging there and there's a crawler above her. And like Juno and Rebecca, I think, are next to her, like on the ledge, like screaming and being like, Sam, no, like, you know, hurry. Sam's completely silent. And yet the crawler kills her instead of the two people screaming right next to them. So I think that always kind of makes me mad because I'm like, why like that doesn't make sense with what you've given us so i wish they would have had her like scream when she looked up or something and then it attacked her like something like that where it's like it made sense why it killed her Mm -hmm. because it really didn't (laughs) yeah no you're right you're right yeah comparatively they were way louder than she was for sure yeah she wasn't making a peep no um but it did make for a really cool death scene where she's hanging upside down and dripping from her neck. I liked that. Yeah. <laughs> a little liked is a weird word, but. Just say you loved her dying, okay? You little weirdo. <laughs> I kind of did, honestly. <laughs> Not as much as Holly. I really appreciated Holly dying. I wanted her to have some relief. but Oh, you wanted Holly to die for her benefit. Yes. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah, I if think my leg breaks like that in a cave, just take me out. That's fair. I don't. I don't think that my leg being broke would be like the worst part of that situation. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, your leg's broken, and there's monsters coming after you, and you have no idea how to get out of this cave, That's and true. like people are actively dying around you. Well, she dies first, so. Oh, does she? Yeah, Holly's killed first. Okay. Still. I think out of everybody, she maybe handled it uh, the worst. Not to say that's... No, 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 like the situation they were in. Oh. (laughs) Which is fair. I'm not sure as though I would handle it very well. (laughs) (laughs) But I probably wouldn't go throwing myself through entrances because I thought that there was a way out. I'd probably take it a little bit slower than she did if it's an unknown system. Right. Right. Um, Which reminds me, at the end, Sarah's just kind of laying there in this pile of bones. And it's dark. She's not moving. And then suddenly there's light. And that's the exit of the cave. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It was just maybe the sun just came up. Maybe. Who's to say? I mean, the director could tell us. <laughs> Let me give Neil a call. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, at Neil Marshall, please respond. <laughs> That's true, because we don't really know like how long they were in there for. Like, was it a few really? hours or was it like longer than that? You know? It feels I mean, like it, it happened. Like hours. Yeah, it felt like it happened very quickly. Pretty um, quick. Yeah. I would say maybe like four or five hours. 
But then yeah. when she falls and hits her head, it's like uh, you don't know how long she was out. That's true. So maybe it was, was it nighttime, and like that was the sun coming up. That's what I'm saying. I suppose it's not. It's not the wildest plot hole. You know, <laughs> you could you could explain it. I think. <laughs> true. 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 How uh, um, how scary did you think it was? Um, so I watched it in the dark. There are a ton of jump scares. Yeah. So many fucking jump scares. And 90% of them aren't even scary things happening. <laughs> um, but I give it a three. That's, a, I think, a very fair assessment. Thank you. I, I gave it a 2.5. Okay. I'll be honest. Watching it now, it does not scare me. But I do remember the first time I ever saw this movie, and I was shitting and pissing and crying in the club. So, like, (laughs) I do account for that. And I do think there's still quite a few jump scares. I think there were, like, one or two that still got me, even though I knew they were coming. (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, And on top of that, there's also, like, those, like, that claustrophobic feel of the movie, and a lot of tension, like, there are moments where you're kind of like holding your breath, like, oh my God, like when they're crossing the chasms and like stuff like that, where it's kind of like, mm-hmm. there are those moments of tension and the jump scares, which I kind of appreciate that it's not just like one or the other. It's a little, it's yeah. a little mix of both. You know, I agree. Um, the claustrophobia, to your point, was very real, even if you don't have that. Yeah. Um, it was like, Kind of panic inducing. Um, also, like, do you remember that show Fear Factor? <laughs> By golly, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there was an episode of Fear Factor where, like, they they got like complaints. Um, they had to like not air it in a lot of places because people were like bobbing for body parts in a bucket of blood that was a lot of bees um but they were like having to put their face in a bucket of blood and like pull stuff out like bobbing for apples um and it made people really really uncomfortable um which is like the entire point of the show but like more so than other things in the show yeah um i kind of got that feeling when sarah like pops up out of the like river of blood yeah I was like, oh, I get that episode now. Like, why people couldn't watch that episode of Fear Factor. Like, that's, like, really uncomfortable. So I think that added to the, the both the scary and the, we haven't started talking about fucked up yet, but the scary and fucked up factor for me. Like, that scene alone. It didn't bother you? You were into it? I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> That bumped up the sexy factor for me a little bit. Okay. Well, see, there's, we are still two different people. There's something in horror movies about a woman just like head to toe covered in blood that I'm kind of like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. But like, it was like in her mouth. Yeah, it didn't look, there were like some chunks, which I'm not a fan of. <laughs> Stop. Oh my God. <laughs> I, am I wrong? No, there were definite chunks in there, which is not Ew. the consistency I'm usually looking for. But <laughs> I don't know. Oh You're not going to tell me there's not something like a little bit sexy about like Carrie or like, God, you've never seen like Ready or Not or Carrie, never have seen you? Carrie. Well, there's going to be more movies where women are <laughs> drenched in blood. Okay. Well, we'll so far, that. it's not doing it for me. It It was uncomfortable. That's fair. <laughs> And I feel like most of the world would be on my side with this particular argument. Oh, yeah, no, I'm wrong. But, like, okay. at least I can admit it. Yeah, That's a um, mean thing. You have your tentacles. I have horror protagonist women drenched in blood. <laughs> lots of people like tentacles. That's true. That is actually pretty Just popular. Saying. Yes. Well, yeah. you know what? If this podcast ever pops off one day, I'm sure a lot of girlies will be coming in the comments to tell me that they agree with me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, until that day. (laughs) I don't want to tell you. Um, How sexy did you think it was? 
I still only gave it like a two. Okay. I think like the all female cast, they're all like a bunch of badasses. Like it's fun to watch mm-hmm. them like kick the shit out of some crawlers. <laughs> I get it. Well, the blood scene is gonna go. <laughs> okay. Um, I gave it a two and a half. Oh my god! See, it was more sexy for. Now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like I should bump it up to two and a half because of that. Like, yeah. you know. Because I decided to confess that the scene of her covered in blood. Is- <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's it's an all female cast. Mm-hmm. Juno is a badass, just going around fucking shit up, and Juno's hot. Sarah too. Maybe yeah, that's hot. why I don't hate her. Because <laughs> she's hot. Because I'm kind of like, I think I, I think I can forgive her. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, yeah. Um, I don't blame you. Uh, I still hate her, but yeah. she's not hard to look at. She is not. Uh, yeah, no, two and a half, two and a half. I like that. Mm-hmm. What about fucked up? Um, I mean, so I usually do my fucked up scale on things that are like original, you know, like. Like, you know, I, Martyr's peeling that thing off of her head. Like, that mm-hmm. was really fucked up. And, like, that's not in any other movie, I'm pretty sure. Well. Uh, <laughs> is it really? <laughs> not that God. specific, but in the realm. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a pretty uh, horrific scalping scene in the new... Um, the new Evil Dead movie. Did you see it? Um, speaking of... No. Oh. I saw the trailer. I kind of want to see it because it looks... Like, that trailer scared me more than this entire movie did. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about it. That comes out next month. Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> next month in, in recording time. But um, what was I talking about? The How fucked up it was. Got it. Uh, but why? Uh, because you only rate things oh. for originality. Yeah, originality. Yeah, like, like, you know, once you see somebody gets scalped, I mean, you've seen everybody get scalped. Okay, so, so nice our movie's up, gonna be you know? less fucked up just because you've already seen Martyrs. Probably. Like, it could I mean, be equally... everything is less fucked up than Martyrs. Not right? true. Like, but you, but I'm oh saying, like, God. you could see a movie with the exact same content as Martyrs, but you would rate it less because you've already seen it? Maybe. I don't know. See, because, like, to me, they would be the same. No, okay, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, Otherwise, all of these would be zeros for me because I've seen them all. <laughs> that's true. Um... No, but I mean, like, like, oh, I never would have thought of that happening kind of thing. You know? Yeah, it adds some spice when it's something that's, like, creative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying exactly. It's like, if it's creative, then it's more fucked up. Like, emerging from a pool of blood, to me, was, like, kind of, like, okay, <laughs> gross. Um, monsters chasing people around? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, they didn't even have weird teeth. They had human teeth. Well, they were humans. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, they were going around biting people. You'd think that they would have evolved if they can devolve into blindness. You think that they could evolve into sharp teeth? But uh, I don't think that no. they would really need to. I don't think that the the prey that they're usually hunting are as large as humans. That's true. Okay. Well, regardless, um, I gave it a one and a half. All right. It's not very fucked up. I think and that the, the half is for the leg scene only. Yeah, I feel like if you had watched that whole thing, you would rate it. <laughs> well, okay, so yeah, maybe then it's a two. <laughs> with, the, with what I didn't watch of the leg scene and the like pool of blood scene. Yeah. We'll give it a two. Because I rated it a two. Okay. I think... The blood scene didn't bother me, but, like, the claustrophobic feel of it, I think that that is, it's very realistically portrayed, and I think that that could really bother a lot of people. My mom had to turn this movie off. 
like no, I remember fine. yeah the first time I ever watched it my mom was there and she was like I gotta go like, this is not so my mom's very claustrophobic so as soon as they started oh, no. going through she was like I'm out <laughs> Aww. um but that and then the broken leg scene were the two reasons why it got a bump up because I'm sorry watching her grab that bone was stop blip that's a lot that's a lot to handle it's yeah <laughs> No, thank you. A bit, um, a bit much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, no, two two feels right. Two feels right. With with the whole <laughs> leg scene involved in the yeah. blood scene. I'm gonna throw up. <gasps> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> the it's nowhere near as bad. I've probably said this before. It's nowhere near as bad as the angle scene in Lord of the Rings. I will never recover. I don't even remember that. Uh, the <laughs> show. The show, not the movie. Oh, okay. I was like, I, you guys made me watch them all. I don't remember anybody breaking a yeah, leg. the show. Interesting. Um, people are probably like, what the fuck are you talking about? That scene wasn't bloody or anything, but. Wait, the foot scene? Mm-hmm. That was the most mild piece of shit scene I've ever seen in my life. No. Where he just masturbates to her foot? Is that what you're talking about? No, what the fuck are you talking about? That's not even the same world. Oh, is that Game of Thrones? Yeah. Oh my God, they always get mixed up with me. I just remember everybody losing their goddamn minds at that. And then someone sent me the clip and I was like, this is like 28% of men on a Friday night. Like, I don't know why you're giving this to me. (laughs) I Okay, so now that we're talking about this, which has nothing to do with literally anything... (laughs) I agree with you. That was so mild. That was. You didn't even see anything. She just like pulls her sock down and then he's just, it's implied. Yeah, exactly. It's implied. You don't see anything. It's the implication. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Anyways, that's a different show and not what you were talking about at all. But I'm going to be honest, Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings is like the same to me in my brain because I am not involved in either of those worlds. (laughs) Yeah, I get it. Um, I could never. Oh, sorry. But I get it. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, overall. Overall. I gave it a four out of five. <laughs> oh. I really like this movie. I think it's a lot okay. of fun. Um, there's not like a huge amount of female, like ensemble horror movies, like all female cast. Um, but even on top of that, I think it's just well done. It's a little bit scary. It's really fun to watch. And I think there's nothing really new in it. Like it is very basics of horror when you actually look at like the structure and the scares and, you know, all of that. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I think it's a movie that shows why that works and why you can still yeah. use those basics because it is still a fun time. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> Um, I gave it a three. I liked it. It scared me, which is like refreshing because some of them haven't. Yeah. And I thought that they would. Um, so yeah, I gave it, I gave it a three. It was a solid movie. I would probably watch again. I would never recommend it to my husband, which is like been a growing, like I've talked about it, whether or not I'd recommend it to him every time we've, we've recorded. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, no, I liked it. Yeah, knowing no one, well, I know about Dylan, I would also not recommend this movie. Yeah. No. Um, but if you're a fan of horror, I think it's it's kind of a, I won't say like must watch, but if you're a fan of horror and you haven't seen this movie, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's been out for years. It has, but I don't think it like aged too poorly. Like, yeah, the crawlers are, like, a little bit in, but they're supposed to look like people. Like, they're not supposed to look like these, like, crazy weird creatures, so I think they accomplished that. Yeah. Um, I think uh, there was one scene kind of towards the end. I think it was the scene where, like, Juno is getting, she's so low. She's got the the axe in her leg kind of thing, and she's being, like, rounded. That felt a little, like, cartoony to me. Like, cgi cartoony yeah but other than that like practical effects digital effects were all really good yeah 
Agreed. I don't know what was practical and what wasn't. Yeah, I couldn't find uh, a lot of information on it. Um, so I don't really know. I mean, their real teeth were in there. <laughs> so. <laughs> Creatures' teeth, not, not CGI. We know that. Not CGI, not practical effects. <laughs> no, just teeth. <laughs> uh, All right. Did you survive, Katie? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> this is a very bleak, very bleak movie. Um, and I don't think I was right. No. Um, in fact, I might even go so far as to say I would purposely not survive. Okay. Because, like, like I said, if I'm hurt. I'm pulling a Beth. Put put me out, huh? Yep. Yeah. Take me out, coach. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Um, would you? It was gonna be a bold take, but I think I would. <laughs> okay, I'm but you giving, can't. Okay, so I'm giving myself the allowance of if I'm in this situation, which I never would be. I am someone who right. is an expert at spelunking because I would never do it if I wasn't right. So I'm gonna okay. give myself that credit. If I'm in their shoes, I am also as skilled as they are at spelunking. Okay. So I think to live here, there's like, there's like three kind of important qualities, right? Number one, you just have to be quiet and not in a quiet place type of way, because a quiet place is like, that's forever. You have to be quiet, which I'm not doing. This is like okay. specific moments when they're going to attack. You just have to shut the fuck up. And I can do that. I okay. literally don't talk in my apartment all day long. <laughs> Number two. I think you have to, like, not make rash decisions, and sometimes you have to leave your friends behind. I'm not saying it would be easy, but I'm saying I would do it. <laughs> I would never be like Holly and just full sprint go into a place that I didn't know, so I would never end up like her. I'm not going to be like Beth and not announce myself when someone's throwing a pickaxe around at creatures. <laughs> um you know, there's just certain things like that where it's like, okay, yeah, Rebecca died because she was just watching Sam die. Like, get the fuck out of there. Why are you just still sitting there? There were just some True. things that I think I would have done better. And then the third very important aspect is if you've made it all that way, you can't have slept with your friend's husband. And I have gone my whole life never doing that, nor even thinking about doing that. <laughs> so I think I might be okay. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Very well thought out. Yeah, I knew, I, will... I knew that who I am as a person, I needed to thoroughly explain why I felt the way that I felt. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you can be the one that kills me. <laughs> and thank you. Be the sincerity <laughs> your Beth. How dare you not tell me about my husband? Yeah, right? Oh my god. As if I would ever have a husband. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Couldn't be me. Um, oh, cool. That widens the lead a little. That's true. You're surviving, what, two times now, I think, more than I am. I think you need to have more faith in yourself. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's fair, too. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know. Hopefully I don't have to survive a horror movie because. Oh yeah. God knows I don't ever want to be in this situation. But what I think is that like a lot of the times I'm like, people are like, oh, what would you do in a zombie apocalypse? And I'm like, die. I don't, that sounds terrible. Like, I don't want to do that. But I, I have a, a very nagging feeling <laughs> that I have a much stronger will to live than I give myself credit for. <laughs> <laughs> When it really boils down to it, you'll probably want to live. Yeah, and I don't, I hope not. I guess it sounds awful, but like, I really do yeah. think when push came to shove, I would be a little bit more feisty than I think I would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It's bound to happen eventually. Don't, why, what? <laughs> I mean, probably not in our lifetime, but. 
I mean, it almost happened, right? Oh, you mean like COVID a zombie? Is, I thought you just meant like I would find out. <laughs> I'm like, gee, what's going to happen to me? No. Are you going to kill no, me? <laughs> a, no, a zombie apocalypse, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> you're like god let me lock my doors tonight (laughs) (laughs) you don't lock your doors in downtown LA you fucking psychopath that was a joke my doors are literally always double bolted (laughs) okay I have never okay I was gonna say my doors are only unlocked when I'm going through them (laughs) like that's it yeah okay I was gonna say no ain't no way in hell I'm gonna end up like the people in the 70s who just fucking left their shit open and got serial killed all the time no, <laughs> serious. <laughs> Sorry, rip to the victims, not their fault, but still. Like, <laughs> Jesus. All right. What's well, next week? Okay, so next week is actually going to be a movie that, at the time we're filming this, is not out yet. <laughs> nice. So the next movie is going to be Renfield. So Yay! this one is kind of going to be fun because. You can guess the entire plot, and I won't even know if you're wrong. <laughs> I can't I, help you. <laughs> um, I, I think I have an unfair advantage because I've seen a lot of trailers and, like, read a lot about it. Yeah. Because I'm a huge Nick Cage fan. Um, I like Nick Not Cage so much Nicholas Nicole. Holt. Don't. Okay. Say that to me. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not a huge Nick Holt fan. But, I mean, maybe this will change it. What did he do to you personally? The menu. It's not fair. You can't not like <laughs> him because he played a bad character well. I can't. I, that's exactly why I can and will not like him. That's actually why I like him. Because his original because he's- character in, in Skins was a fucking douchebag. And Ew. I loved him. <laughs> Ew. Um, wasn't he in that show, like, zombie something? Didn't he play a zombie? He was, it's not a show, it's a movie. It's called Warm Bodies. But yeah, he was. <gasps> yes, Warm Bodies. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, it's a fun movie. I never saw that, but I didn't like him in that either. <laughs> I think you would like him in that. It, I think that's on our list, though. Is it? I wouldn't mind watching it. Yeah. It looks cute. It is. It's in our comedies. Okay. Well, Scream King. Scream King. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but no, um, I'm pretty sure yeah. that this movie... Is about Dracula and his little henchman, and his henchman is Nicholas Holt. Um, and Nicholas Holt gets superpowers from Nick Cage to do Nick Cage's bidding for him. Anything else? Well, I mean, you gotta, that's a pretty. You got to go into more detail, KD, here. Okay. Uh, I mean, <laughs> is there a chatter of Brad? <laughs> Probably. Um, I mean, that feels like a really toxic work environment, right? So, like, he's obviously going to some sort of, like, employees anonymous to, like, complain about his boss. And people are like, oh, my God, my boss is just like that. And he's like, no, they're not. And then Dracula comes and is like, I'm fucking Dracula, bitch. And he's got stupid teeth. And that's the movie. The whole movie. You missed like a whole plot point that's like shown in the, oh. the trailers. What? That a friend feel like, I don't know if it's like a romance or a friendship, but he starts it with Aquafina's character who is a cop. <gasps> he like helps her take know. down some, some criminals and then. That's I think, right. Yeah. He like tells her what's happening. So. I think that's like a little mm. other side to the story. How do you think it ends? I don't know what the conflict is other than that. He probably doesn't want to work for Dracula anymore. And the fact that there's a Dracula is a conflict, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. um, honestly, I think that Aquafina and Nicholas Holt team up. To just feed Dracula bad guys. It's going to be like Twilight. Only eat bad guys and animals. Okay. So Aquafina identifies the bad guys. Got it. And, and says, then- hey, Nicholas Holt, this is a guy for your guy. And okay. then. 
I was kind of yeah. thinking, not the same thing, that's a possibility for sure, but I was also thinking that the ending would be some sort of resolution that does not end in Dracula's death, but yeah, also no, no. kind of ends with like Renfield's liberation a little bit. I feel like that's how it's going to go. Is, but. is Renfield a place? Renfield is his name. <laughs> Dracula or no, Nicholas Holt? No, Nicholas Holt. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, I thought Renfield was a place. <laughs> so I'm glad that that was clarified before I guessed. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a... Uh, he is a uh, actual character from the original Bram Stoker's Dracula, so. Renfield. Is that, that's not where Dracula originated. No, no, no. I think it's just the first novel on it, right? Is that true? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I might be lying here. But I guess when I, mean, I think of, like, the original, like, written works about Dracula, you think of Bram Stoker, but. See, I, I think I of, like, know. I think of, like, black and white silent films of, like, the 10s and 20s and. Well. Dracula the book came out in like the 1800s. Sold. Okay, so yeah, that's So yeah, I think that yeah. was like one of the first iterations of Dracula. Okay, that's fair. Because like the concept of a Dracula was like like Romanian, right? Like it's a Romanian a long time ago. We should probably talk about this in the next episode. Yeah, we'll but, talk more um, about the origins of Dracula, <laughs> which I think was just Vlad the Impaler um, in, <laughs> in next week's episode when we talk about Renfield. But I think you kind of nailed it. I think they kind of gave away a lot in the trailer, so we'll see yeah, if there's really any do. surprises when we get there. But Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Um, if we guessed it right, that'll be super fun. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps it up for today. If there are any movies you'd like to hear us talk about, please let us know in the comments or shoot us a DM on our socials. Thanks so much for listening. And we'll see you next week when we talk about the brand new horror comedy featuring Nicolas Cage as Dracula, Renfield. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>